Good morning. Uh, I'm Pedro Oak for Petrobras, now in IT, but I used to be OT manager and then ET manager. So uh, I'm an example of uh, our OT, ET, IT convergence. So <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to, to show you uh, what is IT, OT, ET, ET convergence uh, in real life, okay? Uh, the first thing we are going to, 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 to show you are the key challenges we have um, in the oil and gas industries. We have safety and security issues, we have costs challenges, we have productivity challenges, I know you are taking photos. I'm going to send you the slides afterwards. <laughs> we have integration challenges, and we also have business challenges. Okay. My colleague from Dole, uh, he just said us that we have two pillars: business and technology. But between these two pillars, we have the processes. This is my focus in the presentation today. We're talking about the processes of IT, OT, and ET, and how they can converge and practice, okay? First of all, I'm going to introduce you, if you don't come from the operations, uh, the model we still use today in our industrial plants based on ISA for 50 years now, okay? Here we have the field layer, then the control layer, then the operation and supervision layer, and finally the management layer, okay? If you're familiar with this, I'm sorry. Uh, these two layers, lower layers, they normally are inside our industrial plant, and the last one is outside the plant, okay? In the first layer, we have sensors and actuators. In the second layer, normally we have industrial controllers, there are PLCs or DCSs. Or, see. And the third one, we have the data servers that in Petrobras we call real-time data server or historical data server. And we have the HMIs, the human machine interfaces. And then the management level layer, we have the mass that Janice just told us, uh, and the ERP. Okay, but between these layers, we have some connectors. Between the field and the control layer, uh, we have the I.O. cards, for example. Between the control and the operation layer, we have the switches, or uh, not the switches, just the switches, but other uh, IMPs, what we call. Between the operation and supervision layer, we have the routers and firewalls, okay? Uh, here we use special cables like uh, nomadic protocols of 3 to 15 psi or 4 to 20 milliamperes or field buses. There are special cables, type A or B or C or D cables. Uh, in the control layer, we normally use Ethernet or serial connections like Modbus uh, and other uh, Profibus DP or the, the field bus HSC or other protocols using industrial ethernet. At the supervision and operation layer, we use uh, regular ethernet. And at the management layer, we normally use uh, fiber optics and satellite connections, okay? This is in practice, okay? This is obviously a telecom, uh, uh, the telecom show is at the satellite and optical fiber level, okay? The IT takes care of ERP, MS, uh, routers, and Ethernet. Nobody has doubt about it. And the IT looks up for outside the plant. At the bottom level, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. something, oh, <laughs> Janice, I know it was you. <laughs> I'm finishing in time, okay? <laughs> At the bottom, 
we obviously have industrial automation that takes care of everything in the control and field layer. The question is, who takes care of this green area? The data servers, the HMIs, and the switches. Half of you say IT, for sure, because they have to be updated, the operation system, the IT cybersecurity. But the operations guy will say, no, no, it's me. Don't touch my plan. <laughs> this is my plan. <laughs> it's inside the plan. It's, it's my business, OK? I know it happens everywhere. OK, but this is not all the problems we have, OK? Uh, the data must flow, my colleague from Shell just told us. There is a flow problem in data between or uh, uh, and involving all these levels, okay? You have to gather data from the plant and also you have actions to the plant, okay? You don't have digital transformation without data. It must, uh, it must sound obvious, uh, but it's not obvious because we have data silos in our plant. And these data silos have mutable protocols, OK? So if you don't have data, your AI serves for nothing, <laughs> because you don't have data to process. OK, what is the digital transformation or industry 4.0? What is the gap between these two concepts? Everybody loves <laughs> drones, AIs, analytics, 3D modeling, uh, and trends. Everybody loves that. Everybody loves digital transformation, OK? But what is the gap between digital transformation and to make our industry an industry 4.0? We have to jump over a wall. And what is this wall? This wall is made of data availability, that is including the field sensing and the activation, is made of data standards to enable the data flow, is made of a data feedback to the plant. <laughs> if you gather data but you cannot act to your plant, it's uh, useless. And is made of industrial cybersecurity, including pervasive cybersecurity when we make our automation and instrumentation architectures, OK? It must be from the beginning in the project. So that's the importance of having an open digital twin standard to make a digital twin use, uh, useful to us, OK? Not just a 3D modeling to show uh, uh, pictures and videos in uh, congresses, OK? OK, here comes the OT-IT convergence that helps us to jump over this wall from digital transformation to an industry 4.0, OK? OK, here are the processes. Uh, in information technology, we have ERP, business applications, cloud, software design, databases, workstations and servers, networking, cybersecurity, IT architecture, data science, and business data, OK? In OT, we have field devices, process control systems, safety systems, supervisory systems, engineering systems, technical documentation, asset management systems, workstations and servers, networking, industrial cybersecurity. Opus, workstations and servers are on both. Networking, too. Cybersecurity, too. Automation architecture, optimization systems, and operations data. In ET, nobody talks about ET, but uh, in ET we have process simulation systems, 3D modeling, engineering systems, technical documentation, asset management systems, oops, asset management systems in operations also. Engineering databases, oops, databases in IT. Engineering data and the data handovers. Okay, but these are not three separate sets. How can we see this two, these three sets in another picture, the 2B? 
IT OT ET convergence in f with focus on processes. Okay. In IT, just IT, we can have ERP, business applications, cloud, and software design. That's okay. In OT, nobody wants to touch the field devices, okay? You see, I, <laughs> just the OT guys. It's field devices, process control systems, safety systems, and supervisory systems. Between OT and IT, we have workstations and servers networking in cybersecurity. That's the first uh, problem we have. The intersection is uh, of uh, these two first uh, sets. In ET, we have process simulation systems and 3D modeling. Nobody wants to model 3D in, in OT. It's stuff of the engineering. But between engineering technology and information technology, we have, for example, integrated databases, not just the IT databases or ET databases, an integrated database. And between ET and OT, we have engineering systems, technical documentation, asset management systems. And finally, in or between or in the intersections intersection of these three sets, we have a purpose here of a unified architecture covering OT, IT, and, o and ET, data science and optimization. The data scientists are more in IT, but they must know about OT, so it's useless. You can't optimize what you don't know. And the data standards and data flow, okay? That's because it's important to have an OPAS, for example, focusing on, on OT, and it's important to have an open digital twin standard that I hope that we are starting uh, this conference here, the first seat of the standard, okay? I'm not talking about the innovation model, I'm talking about the uh, IIoT Century of Excellence in Petrobras. Uh, we just opened this last year, 2022, with four focus. The first, uh, first squad takes care about IT-OT integration, covering uh, industry 4.0 gaps, the processes, and identify opportunities for users of services DMZ. The second squad is focused on data and analytics, define industrial data governance model and create and define integrated and standardized data model. The th oh, what happened? <laughs> I know it was Janice. <laughs> <laughs> the third one is uh, the architecture and design guidelines squared that takes care of defining a unified architecture model and deliver integrated design guidelines. And finally, the fourth uh, squared takes care of ET, OT integration and standardization, defines the roadmap for the OPAS adoption and integrate architecture with engineering technology, okay? Okay, this is the main business outcomes expected, so I have a link with the first slide. I, I'm, I'm gonna skip this. Uh, I'm skipping so many slides because I, I want to show you an example that we made with SAP for asset management. Uh, and I have six minutes and 43 seconds. Uh, conclusions. <laughs> uh, the first one is, the first thing we have is strategy and then processes and then technology. It, it must sound obvious, but it's not. Probably when we are from the technology side, we think first about technology. Oh, there's a new technology we have to use. We have to use to change which processes, connected to which strategies. First comes strategy, then processes, then technology, okay? Do not forget to train people. Digital practitioners are very, very, rare. People that know OT, IT, and ET are very rare. 
link the initiatives to your business KPIs and uh, strategic guidelines and report. Balance and give visibility to your deliverables. Value your deliverables. Okay, I recommend you to read a book uh, called uh, How to Measure Anything. It's a very good book. Okay, How to Measure Anything. You can measure anything. So value your deliverables. Uh, dividing to short-term and long-term plan intermediate deliveries to keep the enthusiasm alive. Okay, that's my advice. Uh, uh, you, you don't need to pay me for the advices. It's all okay. <laughs> and start. Okay, this is, uh, uh, this is the text, but it's not the end. Uh, can you switch to the other, okay? This is the learnings and best practices. It has so many slides. I'm going to present just two slides, okay? And, and uh, the first one, this is, this is about IAM implementation in Petrobras. That is the, the intelligent asset management solution from SAP. We had implemented into exploration production and now we are implementing uh, the machine learning in our downstream segment in Petrobras, okay, in a pilot implementation. So the first slide is a quick video, two minutes. Uh, uh, it's in Brazilian Portuguese. Uh, you, if you don't speak Brazilian Portuguese, I'm sorry. It has captions in English. This is my revenge against the United States, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Olá, nessa pílula do PDTIC, vamos falar sobre como iremos aprimorar a gestão de ativos para as áreas de negócio da companhia com o SAP e a AM, uma solução tecnológica essencial para aumentar a eficiência operacional das nossas instalações. Aperfeiçoando o modelo e cadastro de dados que hoje são lançados em tabelas e planilhas, com o SAP e a AM conseguiremos otimizar as estratégias de manutenção planejando as atividades com os profissionais certos e fornecendo as ferramentas e recursos adequados. Com base nas condições dos equipamentos, poderemos programar proativamente manutenções preventivas, alcançando assim um aumento de disponibilidade e confiabilidade dos ativos industriais. O sistema permitirá que tenhamos uma documentação integrada para a execução do trabalho e trará uma visão mais ampla da situação operacional. Com foco em confiabilidade, predição, otimização e mobilidade, o SAP e a AM possibilitará ganhos da ordem de 60 milhões de reais no horizonte até 2025. A solução ASPM, de gestão de confiabilidade de ativos, permite a revisão das estratégias de manutenção de acordo com a necessidade, de modo a mitigar efeitos negativos provenientes de falhas. A solução PAI, traz uma visão geral do desempenho dos ativos, através do acompanhamento de sensores e indicadores, em tempo real, em forma de gráficos e mapas geográficos. Também possui funções analíticas que possibilitam a manutenção preditiva dos equipamentos e sistemas. Estamos implantando a solução para os sistemas de coleta e compressão da plataforma P75 no campo de Búzios e nas ondas seguintes vamos evoluir a solução e expandir para as demais unidades em linha com o objetivo de ampliar a confiabilidade dos sistemas industriais da companhia. O IAM é uma ferramenta robusta e referência de mercado. Essa implantação está alinhada aos direcionadores estratégicos do PDTIC de experiência do usuário, arquitetura moderna e de dados como ativos de negócio para decisões mais rápidas e assertivas. SAP e AM, mais uma solução digital do Transformar, um dos maiores projetos de tecnologia da Petrobras para os próximos anos. Ok. Uh, this the, the processes, I love processes, <laughs> and the expected benefits, okay, for, for implementing the APM uh, uh, solution. Thus, we have maintenance and reliability, asset management, regulatory, and uh, the, the TCO uh, expected from this implementation. This, this is the last slide. 
Okay. Just talk about uh, closing the loop of reliability. Okay. First, we have the demands, the the planning, the the maintenance planning, the approving, the safety, uh, the leveling, the work clearance, confirmation, and completion of the maintenance. Okay. This is the main processes involved in maintenance. For each of each, for each of uh, what each process here, we have an SAP solution, uh, Fiori and uh, EHS and MRS and EAM and the SAP core that is the S4. Uh, but the the problem here to solve is how to close the loops. Okay, how do I feedback from completion to a better demand to a better maintenance plan? The first closed loop for uh, the upper loop here, using a SPM, that is one module of uh, IAM, is to put our uh, failure mode uh, studies like FMEF, MECA, inside a centralized system to make it possible to revise the maintenance and inspection plans. So when we have a better maintenance and inspection plans, we can feedback our reliability loop to have better demands, okay? This is implemented in, in, in Buzo's field, that is the largest oil field, uh, I think one of the largest in the world, uh, probably the largest uh, offshore. In, and this is also in, this is implemented in our four FPSOs in Bozus. And the lower closed loop is another module of IAM called PAI, that's the Predictive Assets Insights. I, I love the names SAP gives to uh, the product. Uh, it, it is this, this one, this upper loop, this upper closed loop is focused on uh, systems and the lower closed loop is focused on critical equipment, okay? So it gathers information from the critical equipment, analyzes this information using machine learning, and then feedbacks me with the rules, alerts for the critical equipment, okay? This is basically what uh, uh, I was planning to, to show you. I thank you very much. And uh, let's think better about standardizing everything to get data and with the data to talk better about digital transformation in Industry 4.0. Thank you.